rock horses and mieses <laughs> are like small towns. Yeah. They are like a small town. They that community are. grows up together. Absolutely. And, that's and they exactly drive the bus. What it was. Huh? And you have to drive the bus. And you have to drive the bus. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, I've, I've always coached in, in public schools and never had to drive the bus. No. So, thank no. goodness. They don't right. want me driving the bus. No. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that could be a fun ride. Uh, but you've been in Platt County uh, seven years. Um, you teach sixth grade, mm-hmm. uh, coach eighth grade basketball, and you're the quarterback coach at the high school. I am. Uh, you've had five quarterbacks. Four of those have been Frank Fontana finalists. You've had a Fontana winner, which, you know, for those people that don't know, is kind of the top, top guy in Kansas City there. Small top class. QB, small class. Yeah. Um, you know, similar to the uh, Simone, yeah. but but for the smaller smaller schools. Simone's basically, you're the best of the best. Yeah. They give the small guys a chance with the Fontana. Yeah. But it's well, a good award, and, and they feel it good. Is. They feel good about it. I like how they do that whole Simone thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we've been fortunate. Yeah, you, you guys have, have had some good quarterbacks out there. Yeah. I mean, you know, following you guys. And uh, you also do some quarterback training on the side um, with the NFA. It's a national quarterbacks training camp, National Football Association. Mm-hmm. Uh, you worked for them in Chicago and St. Louis. Uh, branched out, do your own personal quarterback training program, QB Quest. Uh, QBQuest.org is that website. So if you need some quarterback training, if you have a young kid, you want to get them some quarterback training, then check that out. We'll give you a chance to talk about that in a minute. But uh, talk a little bit about your, your time at Platte County and, I mean, the quarterbacks – you know, I, I'm familiar a little bit with your offense. You guys sling it around a yeah, ton. Yeah. So, it's a I mean, offense. that quarterback position is key. Just talk about how, you know, coaching that guy and in that offense. Absolutely. Uh, coming out there, it was kind of getting back to the public school. And, and you're coming to a program that, you know, after working at Renaissance and St. Mary's, which are smaller, not as well-known programs, you get out to a program that is pretty established. You know, they had that run in the early 2000s. Uh, mm-hmm. Right before I got there, Craig Kelso was the Fontana winner, who was the quarterback. Yep. So it was, you know, and I came in kind of as a volunteer because, you know, they're kind of their staff was full. But I, I told them that I like to work with quarterbacks. And so um, it was a spread offense, but Craig was more of a runner. Mm-hmm. You know, he was really athletic. He could throw. He threw for 1,200 or so, but he was a runner. And so coming out there. Um, I brought a pass game element to the next kid because the next kid was James Valentine. I mean, he was not a Craig Kelso. And when I first got there, he felt like he had to be because that was where the su- they had success with mm-hmm. Craig yeah. like that. And, and I had to keep him in his own lane. And he was one of those that he was a thinker. You know, he was smart. He didn't have the biggest arm, but he had a nice quick release. But, he, but then he became, like, pinpoint accurate. Mm-hmm. So he, he just worked everybody underneath. And um, he ended up having a great year. We went to the quarterfinals. We lost to Harrisonville um, in the quarterfinals. It was like a 30-mile-per-hour win. So that's the worst thing you want with yeah. a passing offense. Um, but after that, um, I kind of got a little bit of a reputation of, okay, I can do some things with quarterbacks. And so um, the next guy coming was Justin Mitchell. And um, he was – he was going to be a sophomore coming in. I think we had one quarterback in between them, but then Justin was coming in, and he was kind of that the go the Platte County Golden Boy. You okay, know? Uh, he's he's actually at Oklahoma for baseball. You know, he was a baseball kid, but you know he was just kind of one of those Type A athletes that could put a team on his back. You know, but because he was so baseball, a lot of my work had to come um, during the season because all summer he was. He was doing baseball. So we had a couple years with him. And his senior year, he ended up being a Fontana finalist. And then uh, next was Tanner Clarkson. Now, he was one of those that was always just the second thought quarterback. He was the B-team kid. He was small and he was skinny. And, you know, he always kind of had somebody in front of him that was just kind of just more physically DNA better. And then right after his freshman year, he talked about one because the kid that was in front of him moved out of state. So it was kind of his position okay. at, at that level. And so we started working. And he kind of is, a, is a, a poor man's Merck story. Okay. He didn't get all the big time love that Merck's got. But he had the type of season almost that Merck's had. Whereas he had one year to do it after Justin left. Um, and coming into that year, 
the ball was coming out of his hand differently. And um, and he really studied the game. We did a lot of film work and different things like that. And, you know, we didn't know as coaches what he would do when he got out there because of the whole Friday night lights, yep. you know, X factor. It was not a stage too big for him at all. I think he ended up having 300-plus yard games against – Five different teams, and all of them were 500-plus. So, like, Staley, when they were undefeated, yeah. he threw for, like, 360 against them. He threw for 460 against Carney. He threw for 300-plus against Belton, and they had that kid going to Nebraska. He threw 300-plus against Webb City. Okay. Like, we were going down throwing against Webb. Yeah. And Webb was one of those, um, you know, six championships in eight years kind of yeah. teams. And – um Afterwards was a great moment that I, I kind of really felt like the team as a whole was appreciated. Is when I went to coach, uh, uh, shake the coach's hand, he kind of shook my hand and he kind of shook his head. And he was like, We got lucky. He said, You guys yeah. are good. Like, we got lucky. And, and they were ones that they hadn't led all, they hadn't, they hadn't played from behind all year and they were averaging beating people by 30. Mm-hmm. And they beat us 21 18, you know, and so. You know, that was the kind of year that he had in one year. Then I got to transfer Spencer last year. Yep. And actually, Justin Hoover sent him to this because yeah. he was looking to move from the Blue Valley or Shawnee Mission Northwest area. Okay. And he wanted to go to Hoover. Um, but for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And I ended up finding out, you know, me and I, Justin's like a, a big homie to me in terms of yeah. the whole quarterback field. You know, he's. He's the big, big wig when it comes to that around here. So I like to try to pick his brain, you know. And so uh, I called him when I found out that he was coming over. And so he kind of talked to me about him a little bit. And he was like, yeah, you know, I suggested that he go out there with you, with your offense and you guys' success and and you being where you were at, which was a compliment to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so he came out. And it was one of those to where he was one of the first quarterbacks that I coached that hadn't been in the system. Okay. So he was raw in terms of what we do at Platt County, but he's a gunslinger. Yeah. And he has a big arm. He's a little fella, but he's got a big arm and he's a and he's a gamer. And so what it was was just kind of ha- helping him navigate game situations cuz I don't know their record, but they weren't really on the radar from what I remember as a Kansas school. Okay, yeah, Shawnee Mission Northwest. Yeah. So, the cool yeah, um Shawnee Mission Northwest, I mean they've been okay. They yeah. they last year they had a pretty good year. Yeah, I think last year they um, good. for them uh Bo Black's son, I, I can't remember his first name, but the quarterback is the coach's son. Okay. And I think he'll be a s- soft – no. Junior? He'll maybe? be a junior yeah, this year. I, I think he started young. last year as a sophomore. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, they sling it around too yeah, with their yeah. offense. It's not, you know, not exactly the same. I mean, everybody no. runs the spread a little different. Sure. But, yeah, they, they sling it around over there too. And I, I think, if I remember right, you know, that was part of the situation. You know, his coach's son coming up. and Yeah, yeah. I mean – and you, you know, know what? I didn't even I didn't even try to dig into why. Yeah. You know, when he came over, it's like, all right, we got to get to work. Yep. You know, uh, he was going to be a senior. I didn't think the guys that we had were going to be quite ready. That could they they needed a year, um, and so that kind of gave us a buffer year with a kid that was at least experienced in Friday nights. And so I think the big transition when he came over here was controlling his arm. You know, he yeah. wanted everything deep. He wanted the big ball mm-hmm. all the time, but. You know, what, one thing without giving too much of our information away is, you know, playing underneath, you know, in the past game can be just as dangerous because everybody's playing to, to take away the big ball. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's a, you know, I think I heard one statistic that the, the deep ball is like a 26% completion ratio. Like, yeah. It's not, it's not a high percentage completion. No. It's an easy ball to, you know, because everybody gets to run in. A lot of times the quarterbacks are late getting it out. Yep. And so, you know, having him, showing him how to play underneath footwork, timing up your footwork. That's one thing that I'm just really big with my quarterbacks on is timing your footwork up with each route. So a three-step no hitch, that's a route. As soon as you reset, that's another route you've changed your mind. Defend the whole field. Like, you got to defend sideline to sideline. So we got backside situations that if that's not there, now we're coming backside. Now then you got to get out of there. So it gives them an internal clock. So those details to the position – I think helps Spencer get over the hump, and he ends up winning it, you know. And so, and it was a, it was a toss up between him and Kellen. I think Smithville wasn't too happy, you yeah. know, because but we we split, 
You know, uh, mm-hmm. with, they beat us when it counted and put us out of the playoffs. But we had the big Spencer had a big comeback win against them um, in the season where they were up twenty seven nothing, and then we ended up coming back and beat them twenty eight twenty seven, and mm-hmm. it was him. You know, having four touchdown passes and big drives in the second half, and so you know he earned it. Yeah, you know he was a hard worker and a hard player. He just his size. You know, didn't allow him probably to get the looks that some of the other quarterbacks could get because mm-hmm. he had as big of an arm as anybody, and he, he he had the competitive spirit as good as anybody that I've seen. So, you know, so those are the quarterbacks that I've had, and you know, they've all thrown for twenty five plus hundred yards. So like we really throw it around, but we don't. A lot of people think we're like ninety ten eighty twenty pass, and we're really like a sixty forty. Yeah, you know, we we do run. We just kind of. We we definitely have implemented the RPO game to it, but and it's a, it's a lot of reasons. Our quarterback has to be smart. He has to understand the box. He has to understand pre snap reads. So you know if whatever coverage they're in, there's a weak area. So mm-hmm. if they're in a cover four, then we want to take a, we want to look at the flats. If they're in cover three, we're looking at the seams. Yep. You know if the cover two, we're looking at the middle or the hole. Cover one, we want routes running away because you're manned up. Cover zero, we're trying to get, you know, over the top. So them coming in there and being able to identify that before the snap gives them an advantage of, okay, now this is the area. And then we put combos together to try to attack those areas according to what we see. And that's what the no huddle gives us. So, you know, when they get that down with the footwork, there, there's there's success that comes with that. And I think that's what's, what our quarterbacks have been able to do. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Yeah, hopefully uh, Coach Oots won't get mad at me, you know, giving away any state secrets, saying you guys sling it all over the place. <laughs> That's Ho- what everybody says. Yeah, well, hopefully, you know, I'm not giving away anything there. Yeah. Uh, as the uh, season gets gets close I here. think that's kind of our reputation. Yeah. We, no. we, we've, we've done scrimmages, and, you know, kids are like, you guys, that's all you guys do is throw. Well, it's, <laughs> one is seven on seven, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what I mean, but – we do, we do throw it. It's a fun – we tell our receivers and, no, and our it, skills It's kids, a fun offense to it's watch. It's a fun offense. It really is. Like, you're not going to get out there and just block. Like, we taking the – you know, just block – the receivers block during the run game away. Like, we call a run. You better still be ready because mm-hmm. this may be coming out depending on what that box looks like. Yeah. So, you know, it, it does. It makes it fun, and the kids work hard. So, you know, we get into the preseason. We got a line of 20, 30 receivers. Like, all right, everybody's not going to be <laughs> yeah, some yeah, of y'all yeah. will have to go to the other side of the ball, and we got to change this up. Even though it looks fun, it's not for everybody, you know. Yeah, you know, kids all like we talked about earlier. They want to be around that fun. They want, <laughs> yeah. you know, they know that's where the fun is. And this, <laughs> absolutely, offense. yes. You know, I don't want to be that guy throwing it because he has to know too <clears throat> much. Uh, yeah, but I can stand out here and, and run around and he throw me the ball. And they think they do. I always they'll throw it back to the quarterback after a drill or something. Like, coach, you see that? I you put me in. I'm like, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> How do you attack a cover four? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go back over here, Coach. Like, it's a <laughs> lot of thinking to the quarterback. Yeah, definitely and, and, and a lot I more. And put a lot of pressure on them to, 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 to think. Like, you gotta, you're gotta. you not only playing against this 11 here, but you got to out-scheme them on the sideline, too. Like, you play yeah. against them right now, this play. Yeah. Because they're, they're, playing, they're putting something together to stop you. Yep. So, now you got to outsmart them plus react to what they're doing. So, I, 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 I give them a lot of pressure. Monday through Thursday, so that they can kind of have some fun on Fridays. I'm not really a yeller um, on the sidelines, but I'm definitely like, come find me as soon as you come off the sideline. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go talk. Let's go to the TV. Let's see this. We got to think about this, you know. But it's fun, and I got good kids to work with. The coaching staff is great. Oots does a great job of letting us coach, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and being a, a team manager. Like, I mean – Nothing goes done without, you know, he's on the headset. It's like, all yeah. right, guys, you know, let's take some time off this clock. Or, no, nah, we're not going for a punt, mm-hmm. you know, when we, when we think we want to take a shot. So, you know, he definitely runs the team. But he gives us our opportunity to, to be coaches. And, and, and so we gel and we mesh real well. And, you know, I think we, we put together some, some good teams with that. Cool. Yeah, I like the old school Jordans he's got on. The Concords. <laughs> yeah. The uh, that's one thing you know. I mean, I, I love working for Coach Hoover. Yeah. You know, is really I, I know he's going to let me coach my D lineman. You know, now like you said, he he runs the team, sure. and, and there's there's things that come you know either through him or through the defensive coordinator. Yeah. Like, hey, we need to make sure to emphasize this this week or whatever. But absolutely, you know, uh, he he for the most part, you know, trusts me and and all the guys on our staff mm-hmm. to to really just do what we're yeah. supposed to do and take care of our business with our group. Absolutely, absolutely. And those are the best guys to work. Yeah, I mean, when they just leave you alone, 
hey, just just do what you need to do to get it done. Yeah. You know, now, on the other end of that, if it's not getting done, I'm sure that's a tough conversation. Yeah, you know, there's but, been times in the –